A new ed commissioner, a little analysis on that and more education wise tonight. The Dan York State of Mind program is brought to you at part by Lookout Rhode Island and Taco Comfort Solutions. <laughs> oh, welcome in. Just a little behind the scenes chatter. Uh, we get a little punchy at the end of the week. It's called uh, Dan York State of Mind Madness. It goes along with March Madness. How are you doing in your bracket? I have no idea how I'm doing in my bracket because we tape our Friday shows on Thursday in the early afternoon and game one or the games one are or game ones, whatever you want to call them, the noon games are, are just wrapping up. But uh, it's been an interesting week in education. And as you know, on Fridays, if you're a regular viewer, if you're not welcome, thanks. We don't uh, I don't do any kind of thought process on the news cycle of the day because I'm recording on Thursday. It also gives me a chance to kind of spread things out a little bit. And um, uh, Dan McGowan is here. He's the education writer for WPRI.com and uh, covers the city of Providence. And I will tell you, they are, they are uniquely entwined in this, in this appointment for education commissioner. Here's the headline that I'm sure you saw and a lot of people saw from the Providence Journal. And here is Anita Buffoni's report on this. She's great, by the way. The overarching <laughs> message from Angelica Infante Green was that it will take teamwork to improve Rhode Island's education system in a way that will work for all students. We are embarking in a huge undertaking that it's gonna take all of us to roll up our sleeves and work hand in hand to get this done. Infante Green spent much of her career working to expand educational opportunities for all children, including English language learners and students with disabilities. Recent test scores show Rhode Island is struggling to improve outcomes for students who don't speak English as their first language. The governor explained her experience will help where Rhode Island is lacking. This is a woman who has literally dedicated her entire life, her entire career, 25 plus years to ensuring that all students, all students, have an opportunity to succeed. Her two children and husband stood beside her while she described challenges with raising an autistic son. During her tenure within the New York Department of Education, Infante Green established the first autism inclusion dual language program. There wasn't a bilingual program that would suit his needs, so I created one. This is about solutions. No one's going to stop us. Infante Green would replace Ken Wagner, who was at the helm of RIDE since 2015. He has now taken a job at Brown University. Uh, is Wagner officially done yet? I think he's riding that a couple of weeks. Yeah, right? he's going to be. I think there might be even some, a little bit of overlap, so I think it'll probably May. Figure he's going to the about. Annenberg Institute at Brown. That's right, yeah. A think tank. Yep. Yeah, do research kind of stuff. Yeah. Nice job. Well, it's a great industry. <laughs> Thinking for a living. Yeah, you, you know. get to do that. I might, I might try to do that someday. <laughs> to, just do a little thinking about <laughs> about what we're doing. Uh, welcome. What's your what's your quick take on this nomination? I think she makes um, a lot of sense given sort of the biggest challenges that Rhode Island schools, particularly in the urban districts, have. It's the achievement gaps between your fastest growing student population, which is ELL, usually Latino students, um, and, and students who speak English as a first language. So uh, it makes a lot of sense for a woman who's kind of devoted her entire career to, um, to really trying to close those achievement gaps in a really tough place, right? She's done this in the New York City Department of Education and the New York State Department of Education um, to varying degrees of success. Yeah, the, this is a it, difficult thing. Right. right? The, the, the gap closing um, uh, term is, is certainly accurate, but the gap is still wide. Absolutely. I mean, and it's the huge. testing standards, uh, while she has had double digit increases in the teens uh, in, in these categories, the testing standards were lowered that's in right. New York. That's right. So, yeah, I would in terms I, of graduation rates yeah, and that kind of a thing. I would say, you know, I when I did uh, as much research as I could on her, I was less interested in closing the gap on scores because because standards get lower and because there's all kinds of reasons why these things happen, right? Um, I was more interested in, if you, she published uh, a what, what's called a blueprint for um, English language learners a couple of years back. If you read that, it's a pretty long document. Um, it showed you just somebody who, who has a, a keen expertise 
on on what uh, what it takes and from both teachers, from parents, from sort of setting expectations in in classrooms. Um, so I was impressed with that. Um, but you're right. I mean, look. This is a difficult population, um, and so you know you can't expect it to change overnight. It's just it's just not going to happen. But I do think she'll put a real a real spotlight on it that uh, that hasn't happened necessarily in recent years. So I, I want to go back to the merits of this choice. Uh, we have plenty of time to get that done here tonight. But uh, I have. Uh, I have taken what seems to be uh, almost a countercultural angle on this, which is to look at the process. Mm -hmm. And while there is no statutory obligation for the governor to have a competitive public right. display in order to be able to get an ed commissioner, I think it's, 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 it's more or less tacitly woven into her gubernatorial responsibility to show a level of transparency mm -hmm. here, to actually make Rhode Islanders feel like they're wanted so that we can see that there are a number of education executives who want to run this yep. place, uh, to at least be able to say in formality they interviewed a handful of people rather than just saying, yeah, I did, but Trust I can't me. tell you the proof. Right. Um, clearly in the network of educators, she stood out. Hey, in a lot of industries that happens. If you're performing and you're well known within the network, right. people are gonna come find you. Right. They recruited her. Right. The, absolutely. There's, they recruited yeah, her. There is no doubt that that's, that's exactly right. Um, it, Linda you Borg, don't have any journalistic qualm about saying that's absolutely 100%. true. I, look, Linda Borg from the Journal covers education and I have been talking about this, her, for since right after Thanksgiving. We've known that, that this was the, not that, that she was the pick, but I think we both tried to get in touch with her because we heard she was the, the favorite. So this is, you know, it's, it's college basketball, it's March Madness. She's a top recruit. She's a five-star recruit in the world of education. And so, yeah, I think very much they knew what they wanted. I think they, what they would say is, uh, what, what meaning the governor's office is, Massachusetts literally just did this process. So, you know, there, was, there were three good choices there. She was one of them. And, you know, somebody else got the job. And so, you know, the blueprint, so to speak, was already laid. But you're exactly right. Look, Deborah Gist went through a very public process when she was recruited here. Less so with Ken Wagner, but there was parent input. There was all kinds of things. Providence is going to do this too. They're going to do a public search. Um, there's something to be said about a public search, even if, and I suppose you and I might be talking about this, if they had done a public search and we knew that she got the job and we knew it was the whole way, maybe we say all the fix was in, there's still something to be said about a, a more public and transparent process. Yeah, and or a governor who just says, hey, look, I, I would have paid a headhunter to go get her. Mm -hmm. And I went out and got her. And... Uh, I'm not going to even. I'm not even going to jerk your chain over the idea that I looked at other people or any like. Just be clear right. and truthful about it, uh, and then hang your leadership hat yeah. on that. Mm -hmm. This governor doesn't know how to do that. This governor, you know, this governor knows when she's caught in a situation like that, and instead just tries to stare you down with cliches and the suggestion that she talked to six people and interviewed three, right. which is what she told me. Yeah. Talked to six people and interviewed three. Um, who are they? Right. Well, the privacy issues here. We can't be adding the people who didn't get the job. Here we go again. Uh, no formal, you know, on Tuesday night, December 11th, we had, you know, four hours worth of discussion with people that came in the back door. Uh, no one was let, none, none of that, right. none of that. No. So. Uh, and, you know, getting, here's the thing, I'm trying to figure out who the public is. I'm sitting here defending the public. Mm -hmm. For the public's right to have a participatory role in this, or at least an inkling. Do you know who the public is anymore? Because I feel like I'm John Belushi <laughs> in Animal House, who when he says to the frat guys, you know, we're not going to, let's go! And he runs out the place and everyone's still sitting there with their beer, empty beer in their hand going, we're hungover, we don't want to go anywhere. Yeah, I, mean, I think... I it, don't know who the public is. I suppose in this case, uh, particularly when it comes to education, the public are parents and, and folks who could have, you know, who, who potentially could have had a say in this process. Interacted. Right. Informed the candidate. Sure, right. 
Because the candidate, with her expertise notwithstanding, isn't informed about the governing process. Of course not. Right? I asked her a simple question at the press conference. Hey, by the way, do you know what the limitations are on the actual Commissioner of Education to be able to dictate the districts what they need to do? Right. Ain't easy. And I said, you know, you can't mandate this. Well, I'm not big on mandates. Yeah. I'm not talking about your style. I'm talking about your authority. Right, right. And by the way, you're working for the one who just made the speech, which is she, the <laughs> governor. Right? Right. No, I think that's exactly. So, I mean, there's a, lot of, there's a lot of aesthetics that don't match the truth. Right, right. The one thing I will say that I think she can do, um, and to some degree, especially early on, Deborah Gist did, which is, you, you're right, on, on actual statutory authority, it's pretty limited. You can drive, a, you know, build that bully pulpit and use that bully pulpit. I think she has the ability to do that. There's a couple of reasons. One, she's a parent, and if she sends her kids to public school, which I believe she's going to do, um, that's a little different than, than either Commissioner Gist or Commissioner Wagner. She's going to be somebody who's going to, in theory, have skin in the game. It's going to be much harder to push back against uh, someone pushing for changes when she says, look, my kids are there. I want what's best for my kids, and I want what's best for all kids. Uh, so I, I'm... Uh, Cautiously optimistic about that, um, but your to your point, yeah, she's gonna have to. She's gonna realize very yeah. quickly that it's much easier uh, said than done. And by the way, where's the predominance of ELL challenge in the city of Providence, who now has no superintendent? When we come back, <laughs> all right. So Chris Marr is out as the Providence superintendent. Did that surprise you who covers education and the city so well? This is right in your wheelhouse. Yeah, it. Um, I feel like I didn't do my job properly. I was stunned that he, that, that he announced. In fact, I got a heads up the morning of that an announcement was coming, and I thought it was completely something unrelated to his departure. And then I started to hear pretty quickly that, that he was going to be announcing How could you be stunned? So what happened? So it's a couple You're of things. You're not often stunned about things happening in the city. Yeah, I mean, I, 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 think, um, I think I underestimated the amount of stress and pressure he's been under, uh, particularly, and you still haven't actually seen it yet, but uh, they're facing real large deficits uh, this year and, and in out years. Um, the, it's very difficult to cut in from the Providence school budget because so much of your money is tied up in teachers and in salaries and benefits. And so I think he's staring at this issue of, you know, every year I'm, I'm forced to cut something and you're cutting real programs that in theory, you know, have impact on the lives of many, many kids. I like. think it's, uh, there, are, there are after school programs, things like that, that, that are on the chopping block. Not completely, but, you know, uh, things here and there. Um, you know, there's different computer programs that they use, that, particularly at the middle school level, that, that are, you know, supposed to help kids that are potentially contracts that you may have to get out of. Um, so I think it was a combination of that, um, plus, and more, uh, maybe this is more relevant, is being an urban uh, superintendent, uh, it, do it doesn't matter if it's in Providence or Boston or New York City or anywhere else in the country. It's a difficult job. It's not one that people stay in for a very long time. I think the average of the major districts or the large districts in the country, I think it's like two and a half years. Yeah, so it beats you up. City, city superintendents. You know what it you is? Up. It is a job of being, you were asked to be the head of an emergency room, but you're also asked to, you know, cure diseases, <laughs> right? I mean, you're, it's, it, that, that's a very difficult job to put out fires every day, but also say, hey, you need to really turn around, you know, 40 years of, of, of failing in a lot of ways. So that's a really good analogy. So the Ed Commissioner, uh, we don't know where she's going to live, but likely to live in the city, it seems to me, just the way this whole game seems to be playing sure, out. Yeah. Uh, she's going to find, again, that the governance model in Providence is as prohibitive for change and progress as anything else. Yeah. Uh, the idea that they're all appointees on the school committee to the city hall uh, or, you know, to council and, and, and the mayor. Uh, the mayor merely kind of, you know, calls the shots. Um, there are there are financial approval levels for, you know, buying a pair of glasses right, that will right. drive you nuts. Right, right. Um, what role do you think she's going to play there? 
Or so what role can she play It goes there? back to what we talked about in sort of the first segment. I think she has the ability to use her bully pulpit to, especially if she has kids in that district. Now, she hasn't said, I'm definitely moving to Providence, so who knows. I think that's one ability, um, one key thing. Um, but you just nailed it. Look, the let's not pretend like the superintendent is leaving because he doesn't like the city council. Just not true. Um, he, he, in fact, he very much enjoys wrestling with the city council. Chris Marr is a very articulate guy. You know, I watched him on the on the trial stand mm -hmm. when he had right. the, the, yeah, the principal. That's right. Right. I mean, you and I sat there alone. Yeah. You know, for the most <laughs> part, right? Watching this whole thing, his deft ability to be able to navigate and not be intimidated was. Impressive. Yep. Yep. He's not a wallflower. No. No. And and enjoys politics. Had a good relationship with lots of people at the state house. Far better than than Mayor Lors, in fact. Had a pretty good relationship with members of the city council. And the teacher union president digs him. Loves him. That's right. Absolutely right. Here's the thing that that the new the incoming commissioner potential needs to sort of be able to control. You need to sit down with the mayor, and it doesn't matter, it's not just this mayor, it's all, because the mayor has so much power in the school district, the commissioner needs to build a good relationship with their, there, or completely flip and say, the reason you can't get things done is because of that mayor. Um, and Commissioner Gist, at the end, had real frustration with, uh, with Angel Tavares when he was running for governor especially. She was, uh, she attempted to articulate that, but by then her, you know, wings had been clipped in a lot of ways, wasn't able to do that. Commissioner Wagner has had a rough relationship, I think, with the city, in part because he, with pressure from his board and, and things like that, ha has wanted to move on Providence, and the mayor's been very reluctant to actually make well, serious well, change. First, in terms of relationship, let's say this. The mayor's fiance is on the Central uh, Falls board. That's right. Yeah. Um, is uh, no wallflower herself. No. Nope. Uh, advocates the proud Latino woman mm -hmm. angle significantly. Yes, absolutely. There's going to be an interesting, interesting uh, rollout here where this commissioner to be uh, professes, I am a mother. I am a Latino woman. Mm -hmm. Uh, those things are part of her package. Sure. She spoke outwardly about them. Big cheers from a, a very female, you know, Latina crowd. Yep. We'll see whether this is a a, a, a uh, what's the term we're looking for? A, a homogenous. Mm -hmm. Well, and it could be to, for I, those reasons. I, I don't much know. I don't. I don't know whether that's going to be the case. Right. Right. It's going to be. What it's going to take is: does the commissioner come in, and is she going to immediately befriend the mayor's office and, and certainly the mayor's fiance, um, or is she going to listen to what? folks on the Council of Elementary and Secondary Education are saying about Providence, which is we need to step in and do something. I'll tell you, she... What's the argument, though? Okay, so rather than relationships and who's going to get along with who, what is the central argument that the state has had with the city of Providence? What is the central disagreement? The central disagreement is they want to they want Providence to be willing to make significant change, right? They want to really come in and be able to overhaul contracts, things like that. Uh, and Providence has been relatively reluctant for reasons that make sense in a lot of ways, you know, you're, it's all about politics in a lot of ways. It's hard to wrestle with your large teachers union. The mayor just did that and was not a particularly uh, great result for anybody. Uh, so I think that's what, what's part of it. But you, you're asking a, an important question. I don't know that the Council on Elementary and Secondary Education knows exactly what coming in and, and solving Providence's problems is either. And that's why this is really complicated. Yeah. Hey, listen, I wish this commissioner the best of luck. I think the process stinks to high heaven. Um, she may very well have, no matter what the process being, I don't know where I am camera-wise, I, I, I don't know. Um, it, it seems likely that she would have prevailed anyway. Yeah, uh, almost in, in this effort. Yeah. But she's got work to do. Mm -hmm. She doesn't know what the governance issues are with the, with the job that she's taking. You know, hopefully, you know, by the time she gets formally approved by the board. <laughs> by the way, you don't throw a party like that at the state house <laughs> with a question as to whether she's going to be approved. Right, right. Right? We didn't tell the little kids, by the way, sorry, mommy didn't get the job. <laughs> and mom, by the way, lifelong pride in your, in your daughter's 
career. Sorry, Mom, she's not going to get the job. Right. I mean, come on. Right. Uh, but hopefully she learns really quickly about what the restrictions are so that she can figure out a way to use the overused term of bully, bully pulpit. pulpit. Right. When we come back, a, you know, a funny, interesting little battle going on in Providence that we got to take a minute on. Stay with us. <laughs> So this picture uh, caught the attention of uh, Mary Beth Calabro, who is the uh, Providence Teacher Union president. Do we have a picture of Mary Beth? She's, she's, underneath. she's underneath. Oh, we'll go to the next one. Go to the next one. Let's go to the next one. There she is. There, there. Mary Beth Calabro. Well, little picture. Uh, but she's been here, and uh, I, I think she comports herself in public in, in a pretty uh, professional way. She made a point. She more or less was on the Twitter saying, nothing like the Twitter to make people crazy. <laughs> She's on the Twitter saying, hey, by the way, he brought his, he brought his baby to uh, a press conference. Uh, our teachers can't do that. How about equity? Right. To which um, the fiance of the, the mayor responded more or less, hey, we have a situation. I go to school. You know, we're fortunate. My kid's not a prop, back off. Yeah, back off. Yeah. By the way, if you don't want your kid to be a prop, maybe you don't bring the kid in front of microphones while you're conducting a press conference and point to the kid as an example of what you're trying to do on your housing issue, right, okay? Right. Yeah, you know, everybody wants it all every which way until blah, blah, blah. Having said that, what's the dynamic there? I got like 90 seconds. Mary, she made a point and then she grounded it out on, on Twitter and left. There's a little bit of social media blood on the floor. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I think, look, she's speaking to something that um, is something that gets buzzed about uh, in politics and in Providence right now. People are noticing that the mayor brings his child uh, to lots of places, whether it be fundraisers or, um, or certainly events like this. Uh, so I think she's probably voicing concern that some folks have. Um, to be honest, I don't care. I don't think it's a, I think it's a non-starter. I understand why teachers are frustrated about sure. that kind of a thing. Although uh, I it's think a different it's a, kind of job versus their job. Yeah, the, the mechanics of all teachers bringing their kids into work or right. would be. And it's a way of it. it's a way of ruffling feathers. It's a little a little bit, it's a little bit of a dig. Yeah. Uh, I don't yeah. think she ought to be dying on this hill. Not a hill, but, but it does go to show you that it is like this between oh, yeah. Lorza and the teachers. Yeah. Can you imagine? I mean, do you think that would have happened under different, you know, in a different circumstance under a different mayor? Uh, unlikely, no. very unlikely. But what's going to be interesting is there's, there's a superintendent of schools coming in and or the ed commissioner coming in understand that dynamic and navigate that dynamic yeah, because if you don't navigate that dynamic you're not going to make progress right. and then commissioner wagner would say good luck right <laughs> he would get up throw his chair like he did That's on this right. place and say i'm going to annenberg still my favorite uh, I'm, episode <laughs> i'm going to the institutes <laughs> that's it well hopefully we get the new ed commissioner here soon we'll see what her chair throwing <laughs> skills are because that's now the new bar that's right on the dan york show that's right WPRI.com. Don't miss any of Dan's reporting. Thanks, buddy. Appreciate Thank it. All right. Uh, final word when we come back. So, yeah, there are interesting uh, developments and perhaps minefields in the new change agency for the state of Rhode Island in education, which is the way it's always going to be. we got to give new appointees, no matter what the process, the opportunity to succeed because if our educational performance now in crises in this state, doesn't perform at a level comparable to our neighbors who are also part of this viewership in Massachusetts, we ain't getting anywhere. You have a great weekend. We'll see you back here on Monday and on the radio at 3 till 6 on WPRO. Bye.